I would like to make just a few comments this morning. First of all, as you know, today is Memorial Day, a holiday that was originally instituted to commemorate soldiers fallen in battle in defense of their country. And from that, it has become, in general, a day to visit cemeteries, remember the faithful departed. And so I would recommend that to you, especially if it's been a while since you visited our cemetery here at the city of Maryland. Also, we, of course, are celebrating our parish feast day, the queenship of our Blessed Mother. Tomorrow is the feast of Mary Immaculate Queen, and so we will have a high mass and prayers and crowning and uh, renewal of the act of total consecration. But today being a holiday, more likely that more of the parishioners can, can attend, we will have our procession, our external celebration. And so it is an opportunity to reflect upon this title of our Blessed Mother as Queen. And as you know, this feast was established by Pope Pius XII in 1954, the Feast of the Queenship, or May the 31st. This does not mean that that was a new title. Of course, we have the Hail Holy Queen, which, which goes back many centuries. We have the Litany of Our Lady with all the invocations, Queen of the Patriarchs and the Prophets and the Angels and so forth. And many hymns, many uh, art depictions of our Blessed Mother as Queen. So it wasn't that the title of Queenship was something new, but rather there had never been a distinct feast. Now Pope Pius XII declared a holy year or a Marian year to honor our Blessed Mother to celebrate the 100th anniversary in 1954 of the proclamation of the dogma of the Immaculate Conception by Pope Pius IX. And during that Marian year, there were congresses held, there were studies and articles written, etc., congresses to understand more the role of our Blessed Mother in God's plan, her excellence, her wonderful virtues, to understand and, and learn more about our Blessed Mother. And then finally, towards the end of the Marian year, Pope Pius XII wanted to add this jewel to Our Lady's crown of a feast in the liturgical year just to honor that title of Our Lady as Queen. And we refer to Our Lady as a Mother of Mercy, a Queen of Mercy, Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. As you know, St. Alphonsus wrote the wonderful book, The Glories of Mary, and in that book he simply goes through the prayer of the Hail Holy Queen, phrase by phrase, even word by word, and explains it. But we think of Our Lady as Queen of Mercy, that her role as Queen is not one of dominion in the sense of punishment or of um, punishment of sin. That is the role of her son. Our Lady is a mother and a queen of mercy. And as St. Alphonsus explains in the Glories of Mary, God wanted there to be someone who would have dominion, but would only have the role of mercy. Because our divine Lord, we celebrate on Friday the Feast of the Sacred Heart. He is filled with love and mercy for us, but he's also God and our future judge, and he must punish sin. And so he wanted our Blessed Mother to have no part of administering justice, but merely to be a queen of mercy. As St. Louis explains, our Lord shares his kingdom with his mother. She has the same dominion over mankind that he does. She is over the entire universe, queen of the universe. But he wants her role to be one of mercy. And St. Alphonsus in the Glories of Mary, which has so many wonderful stories, tells an interesting story about a priest who might have even been a bishop, who sadly had lived a sinful life, and was to be judged and punished. And there was a priest or someone else that happened to be in the church where this took place and witnessed this. And 
This priest or bishop was kneeling there before the altar, and our Lord came in and sat down, and our lady, and there were the angels, and he was judged right there and sentenced. But before he could be sentenced, all the various charges were brought by the devils, as would take the place, as would take place at judgment. And our Lord went to his mother to see if she had anything to say in his behalf. But she could not. And he waited until she got up and left the church. And then he administered the sentence of punishment, of damnation for this sinful man. But notice he waited until she left. Because again, she has no part in administering punishment. She is only a queen, a loving queen, Queen of Mercy. We consecrate ourselves to our Blessed Mother. We rejoice in being her subjects, in having such a good Queen. But let us also be sure that we do our part to serve her loyally, and that means to serve her Divine Son. Nothing consoles her more than to see us, members of the mystical body, conscientiously adhering to God's commandments, doing His holy will, because that is what pleases her. We can have a procession. We can put flowers before a shrine. We can perform these wonderful devotional acts. But there's nothing more important than living a life of sanctified grace and trying to eliminate from our lives even the smallest venial sin. That gives more honor to the Heavenly Queen. That gratifies her, makes her rejoice more than the than the ceremonies, which are also good because they sponsor, they, they excite devotion. But let us remember to honor our Queen by conquering sin, living a life of grace, pleasing her divine Son, and thereby pleasing her, our loving, merciful Queen.